Over the years, I have led several photographic holidays for HF from their hotel at Brecon. During the digital age, I led three. 2003 with the Olympus E20 camera, 2004 with the E1, and 2018 with the EM1 Mark II. For this production, I have used images from all three holidays, but I am not telling you which camera is currently in use. You, yes, you can work that out. The market town of Brecon is a good place as any to start. Connections by road and bus are excellent, and if you travel from Merthyr Tydfil via the A40, you have a splendid approach from Story Arms, and there are laybys for parking and taking snaps like mine. You can even travel by canal, the canal basin being a convenient place to commence photography. Brecon has a 13th century cathedral and several photogenic streets away from the main thoroughfares, but for superlatives climb the two Iron Age hill forts high above the town with fine views of the beacons, Penna Creek being the most interesting. The canal is the Monmouthshire and Brecon, and a few miles down the Usk Valley it passes through Talabont on Usk, on its way to Newport, an industrial city on the Welsh coast at the mouth of the Severn. The Brecon Beacons National Park cover the high ground north of the valleys, an area that includes the Black Mountains and the Black Mountain, two similar names that can confuse, but they are miles apart. Central to this panorama are the Beacons, the highest mountains in South Wales, Penavon rising to 2,906 feet. From a distance, especially from the north, the mountain profile resembles a gigantic wave about to engulf the town. A similar mountain profile of the beacons presents itself to the south, with one of the reservoirs above Merthyr Tidville providing foreground interest. I was lucky enough to experience a relatively calm day, creating reflections worthy of a French painting. The Brecon Mountain Railway passes nearby, a three-mile stretch originally part of a line from Newport to Brecon, but closed in 1964. Clangorse Lake is the largest natural body of water in South Wales. Again, the beacons form a backdrop, but now further away. Clangorse is undeniably popular, a honeypot for tourists, which at times makes photography difficult. I have taken photographic parties here, but it never works, save perhaps for being a useful comfort stop. Better is Clangasty Talachlin on the opposite shore of the lake, and replacing the Brecon Beacons as backdrop are the Black Mountains. Even to the untrained eye, there are distinct characteristic differences between the Brecon Beacons and Black Mountains, the latter appearing more sylvan, the mountains friendlier. The sighting of priories intended for prayer and contemplation often shows beautiful surroundings and Hrantony, a corruption of a Welsh name that I will not attempt to pronounce, but it means Church of St. David on the River Honzu, comes into that category. Its history falls into the predictable pattern of neglect and decay. Today, the ruins are protected by Cadu, who protect Welsh monuments, so it becomes the reason for a photographic visit. Unusually, and perhaps a great attraction for some, it has a pub adjoining the grounds, and next door is the 13th century church dedicated to St. David, so take your pick. For the purposes of this programme, I give you the church, leaving it to your imagination what I enjoyed in the other place. 
If you did have too much to drink at Flantony, then you might think that you are suffering from a hangover at Cumioi. Over many years, this tiny medieval church of St. Martin's has suffered very badly from subsidence, and to step inside is quite a weird experience. Some fresh air may be the answer, gained by continuing to the upper parts of the valley to the summit of Gospel Pass at 1,778 feet. The views are truly breathtaking over mid-Wales and along the line of the Black Mountains. The road continues downhill to hay on Wye, the book capital of Wales, which has its own literary festival in June. The clock tower is similar to the one in Knighton, and St Mary's Church is also worth a closer inspection. Not wishing to cause confusion, we now travel quite a distance from the Black Mountains to the Black Mountain, occupying the western perimeter of the National Park. A moorland road, the A4069, crosses the mountain, and at its summit are the remains of limestone quarries that used to be abandoned in this area. For hundreds of years, limestone was mined and burnt in kilns to produce lime for use in agricultural fertilizer. Today, we can also stand in awe of these spectacular views. I have paid many visits to the Brecon Beacons, reaching the heady heights of Penavan, Condi, and Cribbin, with my Hasselblad 500CM. Sadly, they are not included. Because of health and safety and the validity of my first aid certificate, it would not be a good idea on several counts to take a photographic party to the summits of South Wales. However, there are many compensations and surprises at lower levels. When presenting an introductory briefing to a photographic holiday, one place that grabs the audience's attention is Carrick Kennan Castle, perched precariously on its own limestone escarpment. Despite its dramatic location, access is easy, and there are numerous photo opportunities from nearby. The castle is located on the western boundary of the National Park, not far from Hlandilo. The current structure is 12th century, but it is thought that occupation of the site goes back to Roman times. Like so many castles, it has a checkered history. It was demolished in 1462, but enough remains to give a good idea of the original layout. For photographers, it is the distant prospect that attracts the eye, and plenty of footpaths proliferate the area. That is, if you pick the right one. We exit the Brecon Beacons National Park, but I am tempted to add the National Trust property at Dineville, just outside Clandilo. It is not within the National Park, but its history and location merit its sneaky inclusion, and anyway, that is the Black Mountain in the background 